we're gonna take this. As you can tell from the weather, it's really ugly outside and I got a really late start to my day today. Guys, seven state police just drove by as I was parked and it's taking everything in me right now to not go follow them and see what's going on. Got my coffee like always. After I hurt myself pretty bad, let's get started. So the way I wanted to start off this series is by first talking about what car company you want to work for. I'm of course a car enthusiast myself, so I really do appreciate all supercar companies or all car companies in general. So some of you may pinpoint a car company and say, I want to work for this exact company and I grew up appreciating them the most. I also want to point out, this is one of the most important things, especially for people who don't have a lot of experience or background or credentials to be racking up on their resume. This is also very crucial crucial when it comes to applying to colleges and things like that when you don't have a lot of experience or achievements in high school. I will make a separate video on Dodge if you guys are interested as well. well we are celebrating nearly 200 of Metro Detroit's brightest and best here at Broadcast House tomorrow. It's a great tradition. Carolyn Clifford yeah. is here now to shine light on another young lady who no doubt is a cut above the rest. You've got that right, Alan and Glenda. Talk about girl power. This teenager you're about to meet may one day be following in the footsteps of General Motors CEO Mary Barra. She loves math, science, and cars. And while she may be young, her passion is taking her on a fast ride to the top. Christina Roki is not your typical 18-year-old. Now, I know you're 18, yes. and you're already a junior at the University of Michigan. Yes. This beautiful young woman who could be on the cover of Teen Vogue loves being under the hood of a car. I started looking at just how, simply Google searching how an engine worked. I had to go through four interviews to get this. Oh, did you? Uh, yes, to okay. get this internship because I never had an intern here. I was really always good at school. I was always motivated, but I never really saw a purpose in it until I started joining robotics. And I, when I joined robotics, I saw all the hands-on applications between science and math and programming. Christina is quite special. She's a smart cookie in math and science and got a full ride to U of M's engineering school where she's now a junior and finds time to volunteer in Detroit to teach young kids how to code and build robots. You've had so many opportunities, but really you want to come back to Detroit and work at yes, one of the car companies. That is true. So I do know that the Ford Motor Company just um, bought a train station. So I am hoping that by the time I graduate, that will be opened and open for opportunities for students and for um, all these different engineers around the world. Such an exceptional young lady there. Christina also created Project 101, building a go-kart. It targets girls and underserved students, and she teaches at a coding camp called Hello World that targets middle school girls in her school district. What an exceptional young lady, huh? Unbelievable. And she already looks like a boss. Doesn't too, she? Even the way Doesn't she carries she? herself. Oh, yeah. Yes, she's it's, ready. It's yeah. girl power yes, all the is. way. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> I, we're not leaving you out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It all started when I saw an event posted on Facebook about a, a supercar Saturday meet, a casual exotic car meet at a dealership, and it was in Florida. I was 17 at the time, so I had barely any money. I was in college full time, and at that time I was also working at a restaurant. So then I asked Tanya, my older sister, which was 18 at the time, if she just wanted to go to Florida. You know, she's never been on vacation before, never been on a plane, and I was like, let's just do it. I really didn't tell her the real reason why I wanted to go because she probably would say no. Of course, we booked with the most bougiest airline ever. And we flew in on Wednesday, and the supercar Saturday meet was of course on Saturday. That Wednesday when we flew in, we flew into Fort Lauderdale because it's cheaper of course and our hotel was also there. As we were unpacking, Tanya also saw this booklet at our hotel that showed a list of things to do while you're in Florida that were within walking distance. None of them were very amusing. It was like restaurants, um, shopping plazas, and just just random things you can go to Michigan for. One of the things caught Tanya's eye and it was called the Swap Shop Flea Market. What is that? I mean, it's like the most interesting thing on this list, so let's just search it up. And so we search it up and I just see a bunch of cars. One of the most rarest cars that I probably would have thought I would never see in my life. And I was like, 
this can't be here. We both still agreed that tomorrow we're gonna go check it out real quick and see if there's anything. We Ubered there early in the morning. Huge amount of land just fenced off. It was, I believe, 88 acres. And it was so empty and it seemed so abandoned. I'm like, this is really creepy. And there was just like some carnival rides on the side. I saw the building window and there was, it said Ferrari Museum or something like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, Tony, we found it. But I was still kind of doubting myself. I was like, I don't really think anything's gonna be in there. That's interesting. Like, nothing seemed very formal and the building wasn't that updated either so I was like I don't know so I'll put in the footage here as well but as soon as I walk in I closed the door and opened it again because I thought my eyes were deceiving me and look to your right it was an f50 and I've never seen one before and almost half these cars I've never seen before so just keep that in mind so I don't keep saying that I was shocked it's just everything is like 10 times more better when it's unexpected and I had no idea. Behind that, there was a black Tesla, and next to it, it was a beautiful orange MP412C. And then next to that, it just doesn't get more iconic. And it just keeps getting better, guys. This video just keeps, it just goes exponential. So next to the F40, we have a Maserati MC12. Never in my life would I have thought I would see one of those, and then behind the MC12, there is a NSX. Towards your left, you had a Porsche, a Corvette, a beautiful Ford GT. If I remember correctly, it was a 512 BB and a Mercedes SLR. But continuing towards the right, we have a Ferrari 488. And then next to the Ferrari 488, we have a Ferrari Enzo. Like what the heck? And it just keeps getting better. So behind the Enzo, we have a 458 Special A, which the A stands for Aperta and that means convertible. And next to that, we have a Ferrari 488 GTB, but it had the Special stripes for some reason. And then we had another 458 Special. So that's two 458 Specials and two 488s. And we have an F40, an F50, an Enzo. And that's just when you walk in. And the MC12, let's not forget that. So down that row, I just easily probably spent two hours just admiring those cars and just going back and forth, back and forth. And as you can see here, Tanya and my sister toured the first part already while I'm still stuck in the first car. So just a little foreshadow, there are plenty more cars later. But at this very point, when I was done with basically the first part, this elder approaches me. As you can see, I'm gonna zoom in on this picture right here. I was working at the cell phone booth, just noticing how excited I was to see these cars and there was no one really around. And you could tell that he appreciated them just as much as I did. And if not, I can assure you much more than me because he told me most people just walk past these cars, see that it's a really cool exotic, but that's just the end of it. You know, more than 85% of the people that go there go of course for the flea markets and so yeah people just usually walk in through the building and walk out from behind the man that was working at the cell phone booth was curious as to how i even found out about this place and i told him i really wasn't that far away and i had no idea this place even existed he basically went through each car with me now some of you guys may be wondering where the owner was he unfortunately did pass away just weeks before i got there and I'm not gonna cry, I promise. Every time I talk about this, I do tear up, but I'll try not to. It almost felt as if that place was just hopeless because there was really nobody to take care of it. And more importantly, when I was looking around and observing, I could see that it wasn't just cars that were there. You know, there were so many different objects from trophies and engines in the corner and old racing suits, just pictures and artifacts and newspapers everywhere. You could tell that this place meant a lot more than just a supercar museum. Starting off with the history of the vehicles, as the owner did pass away, the man working the cell phone booth pointed out to the NSX and said that that was the last car he purchased and he drove. That was the last place it was parked before he passed away. And it just had under 300 miles. And from there, I was already tearing up. You look around and you're like, what can I do? Like, I feel so heartbroken for this place and for the man that's explaining it to me. But another fun fact is that the McLaren MP412C, the orange one, um, was his least favorite car because he said he didn't really enjoy the door handles and the driving because he was getting very old. So that car wasn't very for him and he wouldn't drive it much. So a little bit about Preston. Preston did used to race boats, but then he also got into racing cars. He later became a huge Ferrari enthusiast and was part of the FXX program. I feel like half of you guys probably already have heard about the swap shop. So before I was online and active on social media, I heard about this place and that was probably 
that was two years ago within just the last year i've been seeing all these youtubers visit the place so that's cool and all but the reason why i also want to tell you guys about this is because i'm sure almost all of them don't know about the significance behind the cars talking to somebody that was that was best friends with the owner who recently just passed away is so much more significant than just seeing what's inside the collection and then later i learned that the 512 bb is one of the only convertibles of that specific ferrari and it was made for preston's daughter and then moving on past the first section of the cars the right of the cell phone booth you see hornet's car from the movie cars of course i'll put up the sign that was posted right next to it it was one of the actual cars from the movie so also next to the hornet car you have two very significant race cars. So Preston raced in Sebring and also 24 hours of Daytona. I got to see the Porsche 962, which won the world championship twice. So it won for the 12 hours of Sebring and 24 hours of Daytona in 1985. So I'm pretty sure if you search up his, his name and the race car, you'll probably see his statistics. I'll insert a picture of the car right here, but as you can see, the decal and the paint and everything is divided in half. And that stands for the significance of the two different endurance races and then next to that we have the porsche 935 l which stands for long tail now that one won the 1983 24 hours of daytona and then to the left of the cell phone booth you have a porsche 930 and in front of that you have a testarossa that has a red interior and it was captioned red cam covers for the redhead and fun fact for some of you guys who did not know that testarossa actually means redhead and then he told me that he used to actually work for ferrari in europe and when preston was there at the time they met each other and preston gave him his card and told him that if you ever decide to come and live in the u.s you can come and work at my place and take care of the cars there it gets so coincidental i later found out that the cell phone booth man before he went to florida actually lived in michigan he can actually live 10 minutes away from me and so he knew exactly what university of michigan engineering was and so that was awesome so just from hearing that i was already I was already in like total shock and I was like, this is so coincidental. How grateful I was that this man approached me because I would have never guessed. It does get better. So this man told me that there's even more cars than the ones we just saw. Like, Keep going straight, make a left and go down the stairs. You're gonna see plenty of more cars. And as I was walking, I felt like I was walking down the aisle. I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna see, oh my God. As you walk out of the first section, the setup of the next place was tiled in like a checkers pattern and and it had crazy neon lights and of course more objects and artifacts around that of course is some more tents selling stuff so you have some people advertising teeth whitening or customizable shirts a bunch of jewelry which we also purchased and um, just random stuff what's the first car i see you may ask my eyes like struck tunnel vision and i saw the ferrari 275 gtv 4c that's worth over a hundred million dollars right there it does have racing history it was the third overall winner for the 24 hours of le mans and i could just my i couldn't believe my eyes i was like this is crazy one of the other cars i noticed was right in the middle we have the actual testarossa that was used in miami vice and then next to that we have the 365 gtv4 there's only been 122 made but this was the only one with a special race engine what do we have next to that excuse me for my pronunciation but we have the legend michael schumacher's formula one car that was there so a little backstory on that what i learned was that preston was good friends with michael and michael did give him that car for his collection moving more towards the back we also had a beautiful purple gt3 rs and we had a 918 spider and you could walk up some stairs and you could see which is absolutely amazing scale models of each of the vehicles i'm using the ferrari 275 as a reference point to the setup of the cars and so to the left of that now we have a ferrari la ferrari which was absolutely crazy next to the ferrari la ferrari we have a very rare car we have the ferrari enzo fxxk preston was part of the fxx program if you search up preston hen and the fxx program you could see that there's been news articles about him either i don't know if there's just some simple type of beef going around but he wanted to purchase a Ferrari um, through the program and he was getting declined you can read more in details online what I also learned from the man working at the cell phone booth was that if you look around the Enzo FXXK you could see all the places it's been Preston's required to attend a certain amount of races each year to be still a part of the program also next to the Daytona Spider 
there was of course we have to have this in our collection there was a f12 tdf there as well and that's not his whole collection guys he has two other swap shops this one had most of his cars but they also had a couple other of his vehicles he had a porsche 959 but he did sell that before i got there i was talking more with the cell phone owner and you know i was i walked back i was already tearing up thank goodness i didn't wear much makeup that day because it would have been wiped off again like heartbroken the fact that these cars are just here and no one's paying any attention just walking past them and they're worth so much but more importantly they're some of the most iconic vehicles i of course couldn't get that place off my head i literally think about it like every single day till this day that that's one of the places that motivated me to get where i am today after talking with the man that was working at the cell phone booth i was like man i really gotta do like i gotta do something about this place like i gotta reach out to people and figure something out about these cars like someone that could take care of these cars and not look at this place like it's so hopeless and it just needs to go somewhere so carrying on with my trip eventually so we went to the beaches did what tony wanted to do and stuff and saturday came we went to supercar saturday and it was absolutely amazing too i of course as i mentioned 110 times in this video i was like i must do something for this place and this was one of the main reasons why I decided to move forward with Ferrari. I'm gonna create a position for myself and I'm gonna figure out a way that I can do more for the company. I developed such an appreciation within the place. I also read and watched a lot of documentaries on how there was this rivalry between Ford and Ferrari because I did grow up in the Motor City. I also grew up reading a lot of case studies on Ford for some reason and their decisions through the recession and this and that. I was really into economics in high school and middle school. I love Ford and I partnered with them plenty of times. After unexpectedly seeing what I saw in Florida that also made me lean towards Ferrari more moving out of the whole emotional story I do want to point out on a professional standpoint like Ferrari and Porsche and Lamborghini also value are why exactly are you reaching out to that company what got you to choose them over another car company this also really helps you stand out from other candidates because they can see that the company's really inspired you and you want to give back to them not necessarily that they're giving you a position but you want to give them your all and your skills and put your 110 percent towards the company it's also really important to to have that sentimental reasoning because it makes you seem more natural as well you don't want to seem like a robot just click apply 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 upload your resume and submit you know this was the first part of the series and helping you understand why exactly i chose ferrari and maybe you guys have a similar story to a different company many people may have this sentimental value towards a certain car company they don't really express it because they think that the company is more so looking for their experience and credentials but this is just as important because they want to see your commitment towards the company stay tuned for the next video where i explain how i took a step forward to initiate all of my thoughts after coming back from florida so give this a thumbs up if this kind of helped you understand why i chose ferrari and help you guys kind of pave your path through what car company you guys want to start targeting and doing more research on comment any questions you guys have because i will be making a full q a and just thoroughly answering the questions you guys have yeah thank you guys again for watching and subscribe for the rest of the series please thank you